Official Guide 17 version. The S section, question number 231. So, in our original condition, we have a triangle, and it says the angle here is 20 degrees. And the points are A, B, and C, and D. And the question is asking for angle BAC, the one right here. So I'm going to put a question mark there. And also angle BDC then becomes 20 degrees plus the question mark. So if we look at our options in our question, the first one says angle BDC is 60 degrees. Now we know that BDC is 20 plus something, which means 20 degrees plus question mark equals 60 degrees. Therefore, question mark will equal 40 degrees, and this is sufficient. So answer for this question is choice A. Let's look at question number five of Official Guide to GMAT 2015 DS section. We're going to solve it by the variable approach method. This is a typical 2 by 2 question, which appears most often in GMAT questions. We represent that using a table like this. We'll fill in the table now. Those that take bio and don't take bio, and those that take chemistry, not taking chemistry. A, B, C, D. We don't know these. We can also represent this using a Venn diagram. One of them taking bio, one of them taking chemistry. So it's B and C, and A, C, B, and D. The two tape, the table and the Venn diagram will correspond. All right, now that we have four variables, we don't know A, B, C, or D. We need four equations to solve for the four variables. But condition one and two each only gives us an equation. This makes it likely that E is our answer. We'll look at condition one and two together. The question itself is asking D minus A. We're told A plus B is 60, A plus C is 85, but with this, we can't solve for D minus A. It's insufficient, and E is going to be our answer. Let's take a look at question number nine in the DS section of the 2015 official guide for GMAT. In this question, we have a two by two, the most frequently appearing question type in the DS section of GMAT. So we draw the two by two table here, and on top we'll place orange and grape, and on the left we'll place number and the unit price for these. Now we already know the unit price as given in the problem. It's 15 and 18 for orange and grape. So we don't know the numbers x and y for a total of two unknown variables in this question, x and y. So we'll need two equations to solve for these two variables. Now, in condition one, we have one equation. In condition two, we have another equation for a total of two equations. So mathematically speaking, the probability that C is our answer is very high. Well, let's confirm. We don't have to calculate, but let's confirm by looking at the two equations. In condition one, we're given that x is equal to 20 plus 2y. And in condition two, we're given 15x plus 18y is equal to 38,700. Now let's reduce this by dividing each side by 3. We get 5x plus 6y is equal to, let's see, 12,900. And then we substitute the first equation into the second one so that we have 5 times 20 plus 2y, the whole thing. And then that plus 6y should be equal to 12,900. If you solve this equation, you can get y is equal to 800, and then x is equal to 
1620. So in this problem, the answer is indeed C, but you didn't really have to calculate for the answer itself. This type of problem solving is called the variable approach method. And nowadays, it's the most proven and efficient method of solving math problems in the DS section of GMAT. Let's take a look at question number 10 in the DS section of the 2015 official guide for GMAT. Here, Pat saved $600 of his earnings, and we are asked what his earnings were. All we need to know is his earnings, so there's only one variable. And we only need one equation to solve for this. In condition 1, we're given one equation. And in condition 2, we're given another equation. So mathematically speaking, the chances are that we have D as our answer. Let's look at question number, uh, condition number 1. Here, we have earning, represented by E, and half of earning is supposed to be on living expenses, so LE, living expenses, is supposed to be half of E. And then one-third of the remainder is supposed to go into savings, so saving is equal to the remainder, which is represented by E minus half of the E, and then we take a third of this. So this is the saving. Okay, but E minus half of E is just half of E, so it's half of E times one-third, which gives us one-sixth of E, meaning 600 is one-sixth of E, and E is 3,600. So condition one is sufficient by itself, and in Condition two, we're talking about taxes, but taxes are out of scope. So we already know that condition two is insufficient. So A becomes our answer. And this way of solving a problem is called the variable approach method, which is nowadays the most proven and accurate and efficient way of solving problems on the GMAT DS math section. Let's take a look at question number 11 of the DS section in the 2015 official guide for GMAT. Here, we can still use the variable approach method. We need to know the coordinates for Q, being x1 and y1, and then the coordinates for P, x2, y2, and then the coordinates for R, x3 and y3. We have a total of six variables, being x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, and y3. To solve for all six of these variables, we'll need six separate equations. But typically, in condition one, we get one equation, and in condition two, we get another equation, so that's a little less than 6, and we can't solve for anything, so we think the answer is E. But let's take a look at the conditions together now, geometrically. In condition 1, we're told that the x-coordinates of Q and P are the same, which means when we draw it out in the xy coordinate plane, the line QP should be parallel to the y-axis, just like that. And then condition 2 says that P and R have the same y-coordinates, which means when we draw a line between P and R, they're, they're parallel to the x-axis, and so indeed, the angle QPR is a right angle, and we get C as the answer instead of E. So this type of problem, we have used the variable approach method, which is the most proven and efficient way of solving math problems on the GMAT in the market today.